All right, hey, what's up, guys? It's Jamie. I got a few minutes here. I'm picking up the girls. Uh, I'm I'm sitting out front of a place called Title Boxing. It's um, good exercise for them. I don't think they're going to become professional boxers, but yeah, you never know. But I, I hope not. Um, no offense if you're a boxer, especially if you're my buddy Derek. But um, I, what I wanted to talk about really quick was risk management. I'm not going to make a long video here. I I've been trading some stocks, and it made me think about like when people get over leveraged. Now this could be in real estate, this could be in cars, right? Like I see that a lot. And then uh, and then sometimes in trading stocks, okay? So if you are investing, I guess that's, it's just a store of value, I guess, or right? Like, or where does this extra money that I'm not spending on needs, like food, shelter, and clothing, where is this extra money <clears throat> best served over the next five, 10, 30, 40 years. And then it's just a matter of you putting in a 401k, are you buying, I guess, precious metals now? That's something I've never done before. Um, you know, what, what are you buying? Where, where are you throwing that money? Are you putting in Bitcoin? Are you are you uh, uh, investing into uh, Apple, right? Or Coca-Cola or something like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger? I, I, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, is you get into a trade for a stock, whether it's from some due diligence that you did or you heard somebody do it. I'm just giving you examples of, of, of what I've experienced and, and witnessed other people do them as well uh, firsthand. Now, if you're losing sleep about a trade, then you probably shouldn't have never been in that trade. This is not you. This is like me or you, right? It doesn't matter because if you're in, if you're in a in a stock, right? Those are things where if you're thinking too much about it, or if you're focused on it, it it's just not a trade you should be involved in. Uh, versus uh, getting into something where if you lose the money or um, it's it's you, you're not looking at your phone or if it's going one way or the other, you're not going. Oh, what? Why is it going up? Why is it going down? And and getting stressed about it. I don't think that's a good way to trade. Same thing with a car, right? Like if you get into a car payment, I see this the most often. Uh, or if you get into a house and, you know, you can afford it. But what if you lose your job? Do you have enough money to cover the rent or the mortgage for the next six months to a year? If the answer is no, you got to be careful. Like is your spouse making enough money or your partner or your roommates? Can you count on them? I mean, I, I'm a worst case uh, scenario type of thinker these days. And I'm not saying you can have a little guts. You got to take a little bit of risk. I do think you need to do that. But you also don't want to gamble. I, I think straight up gambling is not a good way. Like, you know, I'm talking like 17 black, let it roll, right? That type of, that is just like the probabilities are set for you to lose. There's a little bit of gambling and everything, but you can do some homework and say the chances are, the, prob the probabilities are in my favor that things are going to work out you know, to my, to my favor. So if you get into a car payment where you're over leveraged, where you're like, I, I make enough money where I can afford this high car payment. I've done that before when I was younger and then I lost my job and, and I was screwed because I couldn't make that high car payment. And then I'm being late. I mean, granted I was a lot younger, so it, it, it's, it's far behind me, but it sucked at the time and it certainly hindered me from doing other things. But, um, it, that I'm not the only one, right? There's a lot, there's hundreds or thousands of people that do that. They get into cars where they're making good money and good money could be 50 grand a year or 500 grand a year or $5 million a year. I've seen, I've seen all of that where people are like, Hey, I make good money. I, I make 50 grand a year. I live at home. I have no bills so I can afford this high car payment. Hey, I'm, I get a $5 million, uh, a, a $5 million a year job. And, uh, I'm a VP of a company uh, so I can buy this big, expensive, you know, property. And then they have this high mortgage, um, you know, and they use a lot of money to put down and they think, hey, things are great. And then they get downsized or something happens at their, their job and now they can't afford that high mortgage and those taxes at that property and they lose it. Um, so, I mean, they're just things to consider, right? If you're worried and stressed about it, it's probably not a good place to be in. This car I have now, and I'll just kind of end with this, just as an example. Uh, if I buy it out, it's a lease. I haven't had to make a payment because my my company gives me a, a stipend, so I don't have to make the payment. 
excuse me, if I was to get another car, um, I like not having a car payment, even though I do. But I can take the equity from this car, which is basically paid for itself, uh, and I can put five, six, seven thousand dollars in my pocket right now. That will not exist probably the next time around. So I can upgrade my car to a four-wheel drive vehicle with a hatchback, which serves me well for my pets and for my family and just for stuff that I do. And I'm not going to really go up in payment because I'll have an extra six, seven grand and I still have a, a stipend. Now, worst case scenario, I lost my job. I could pay for the car cash um, or I could pay for the full uh, payment in advance. And I'm not saying this arrogantly. I'm just saying that that is the position that I'm in on that specific car. I couldn't go out and buy an S80, which I would love to do and uh, be at... Um, thought that guy was doing something weird. I could not buy an S80 for $150,000 and be okay with it and be like, ah, yeah, it's 150 grand. To me, I, I, I'm like, I could way, do much better things with 150 grand than buying a car. Now, for some of you, you're in a position where you can. I'm saying, I'm not saying you don't deserve it, but for somebody that doesn't know any better and they make an impulse buy, it may not be best served to get into that type of position. You're being over leveraged. You're gonna lose sleep, you're gonna be stressed, you're gonna have anxiety, you're gonna be distracted if if things go wrong. Just make sure that you're in a good place, whether it's a stock trade, whether it's a piece of real estate, or whether it, yeah, the girls are here, or whether it's a, uh, a, a car. All right, love you guys, I'll see you next video.